What is going on everybody? This is Johnny with Sierra Whiskey Co. And today we are going to show you how to level a scope a better way. But first, I need to mow. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to see this target. After mounting hundreds of scopes in a previous line of work, I realized something strange. The way that most shops do it is they'll level your rifle and then they'll go ahead and level the scope to the rifle itself and thereby the reticle. Now, most of the time, this wasn't a problem. People would just grab their guns and leave. But oftentimes, they would put it up to their shoulder, look through it and say something like, the reticle's crooked. A hundred times out of a hundred, the reticle was not crooked. However, the way they were holding the rifle was slightly canted. There are a few problems with using bubble levels to mount a scope. One, your shoulder face is not flat. When you shoulder your system or get prone behind it, you are likely to have some cant to what you're doing. You often see people with a bubble level mounted on their scope for long range, this helps them keep their rifle leveled. But when their rifle is level, it doesn't conform as well to their shooting position. This will equal inconsistency unless perfectly held with some discomfort, which will at some point give you suboptimal accuracy. Two, bubble levels are typically inconsistent. I could take five bubble levels and put them on the same surface, and even some of the more expensive ones meant for mounting will show a different reading. This is a big problem if we are using multiple levels and assuming they're all reading true and consistent. Three, levels are usually placed on a turret cap or a turret post for leveling. Reticles aren't necessarily leveled parallel with the turret or turret post. There's inconsistency in manufacturing and placement. So a lot of times your scope can be level, your firearm is level, and your reticle isn't. The problem here is that we are running off the assumption that we want the reticle leveled to the gun, and in truth, if we really think about it, we don't. What we are really after is to be able to accurately counteract two things. Gravity, for bullet drop compensation, and wind. To deal with gravity, we want the vertical portion of our reticle, the vertical stadia, to be in line with the pull of gravity and our horizontal stadia to be perpendicular to counteract wind. We also want the vertical stadia to be in line with gravity when we are holding the gun in the most comfortable position, the one in which we will shoot it most often. So how do we solve all of these problems? How do we get set up for the way we hold the gun and still have a level reticle? The answer is simple. We're going to use a plumb bob. You can buy one or make it at home. It's basically just a weight on a string which is suspended. I made one just using some high contrast mason line, a half inch bolt and a nut, and a stack of washers. So here's the setup. Got this mason line here. I've got it clamped across this steel plate and it is hanging freely all the way down until we get to our plumb bob which is not being impeded by anything, but also out of the way so the wind's not blowing it around once it settles. We want to start off by putting our rings on the rail spaced so they will be centered on the scope tube between your turret hub and ocular or objective ends. Pushed forward towards the muzzle so the lugs are butted up against the rail. This is usually the ideal ring placement. If you can't do it because you have a more traditional one or two piece base, it's not the end of the world, but it can cause issues with some scopes if your ring sits close to your turret hub, potentially impeding your parallax cell. 
Next, set your scope in your rings and gently fingertip tighten each screw until you begin to meet the slightest hint of resistance. We want to take all the slack out here and at the same time have the gap on either side of each ring be exactly the same. Once the gaps are completely even, back off every screw just a touch, leaving just one screw out of all the fasteners snug enough so that when you try and rotate your scope, you meet a little bit of resistance, but you can still turn it without scratching the finish of the optic. We now want to get behind the rifle and position it so that it feels the most comfortable and remember the feel of that position. We want our position consistent and comfortable so we have the greatest opportunity for accuracy later. You can even do this with your eyes closed if you want so as to pay more attention to what feels best and repeatable. From here, Bring your center crosshair onto the string and then rotate your scope until your vertical stadia is perfectly in line with the string of your plumb bob. If you have a thicker reticle and it blocks out your string visually, you can set it so it is perfectly parallel to the string. It has the same effect. The rotation of the scope can be made much easier if you have a friend willing to help. Then you can focus on holding your setup and not disturb your sight picture. Once your reticle is plumb and therefore level, double check the alignment and tighten your ring screws down evenly. A torque wrench set to the scope manufacturer's spec is always recommended. This Vortex wrench works great. Is it the best ever? No, but it does come with a lifetime warranty and you will eventually get sand in it or it will stop working properly. So buy once, cry once. Don't use the ring manufacturer's torque spec as sometimes these are way too snug and can deflect the shape of the scope tube which can obstruct your parallax cell or erector assembly, causing all manner of problems. Here I'm using a cross pattern much like you would on a tire, which is recommended if you have horizontally split rings. Once your scope is mounted, you can push the optic forward or aft a space in the rail slots to fine tune your eye relief. Do this on maximum magnification, as that's where the eye relief is least forgiving. Once you have that done, now would be a great time to add a bubble level. Just make sure your vertical stadia is positioned in line with your plumb bob and tighten down the level to match. This can be a bit fiddly unless you have someone helping. And that is how you level your scope to the pull of gravity. If you've enjoyed this content, do us a favor, finger blast that like button. You might as well subscribe while you're at it. And until next time, keep on rocking in the free world. And that is how you level your scope to the pull of gravity. 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 Moon's out. Sweet. Might as well hit the record and see what happens. And that is how... What was I gonna say? The sun is really bright right now. Me, 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 me.